Hi, so I'm sitting next to the pin cushion flower and it has some blooms, some spent blooms, some new buds, um, and it's kind of floppy because it's been raining a lot the last few days, so it just needs to be deadheaded and taken care of, and it will be back to producing more flowers. So if you take a look at each bloom, you can see different stages. Uh, we have one here that hasn't completely bloomed yet. This one is in full bloom, and then this one is already spent. It actually looks like a little pin cushion, complete with pins. <laughs> you can see what I'm talking about here. These look like little pins. They look sharp, but they're very soft and fuzzy. And these are the spent petals. They're just browned and not looking very pretty anymore. But I really love these little pin cushions, so I like to leave them for a time being. But because it's kind of the beginning of the growing season, I'm going to cut them off because I know that these ones are going to bloom and then eventually turn into this. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is to determine exactly where to cut on the stem. You could just cut everything off and then new blooms would probably come from the bottom of the plant itself, but I don't like to do that. If you look around, you can see that it looks like the bunnies have probably been here chewing on these stems. This stem right here is a good example because it has a variety of stages. You can see down here is a tiny, tiny new bud. Up a little higher is a bud that's a little bit older, and then this one is a little further along in the growing stage. Then we have this one, and you can see it has many flowers on the actual flower head itself, which is starting to have flowers actually opening. Each one of those little bubbles will turn into a little flower. This one's a little further along. Before you get to that stage, you'll get something that looks like this. And then once this stage passes, you get a pincushion, and the petals brown and fall off, followed by a total complete pincushion, I guess if you'd like to call it that. Here's one that's in full bloom. You can see it even looks like it has little pin cushions here, or pins in the cushion. The neat thing about the pin cushion flower is that it has two different varieties of leaves. Like they just look completely different, as if they belong to different plants. Here there are, like I would call them leafier looking leaves, and it also has fernier looking leaves. So if you look at each of the different stems and buds, you can see that something like this is pretty easy to determine what needs to be cut off. There's buds here, and then a stem with nothing at the top so you can just cut that off and leave the new buds and now those buds grow and where you cut it nothing will come out of that stem itself and if you left it the stem would just be brown there's another stem you can just follow the stem down and cut it where it meets the rest of the plant and you just leave the buds here's another broken stem flower is just hanging it didn't get to flower completely before it got broken, but there's a new bud right there. So might as well just cut that off. Won't grow anything anymore. It just looks unsightly. Remove it. Again, we have a stem that does, looks like it was either eaten or maybe mowed down or maybe weed whacked. There are no buds, so I'm going to go all the way down to here. Take that off completely. This is what it looks like before deadheading. Here is an interesting wiggly stem. I could just take this whole thing and cut it down here, but I see some buds up here, which is where I cut that one stem at first. So I'm just going to remove the parts that clearly are not going to grow anything, including this wiggly stem down here, and leave that little bud. Another eaten stem, following it to the end, cutting it. I like to do the same type of stem or the same type of spent bloom over and over until I finish one type. I don't know why, maybe it helps me go through the process. I'm not sure, but I cut all the stick-like stems off and left new buds. And eventually I'll cut this off. Oh, there's a hummingbird. Right there. That's Monarda type of mint. It smells so good. So since I'm in the groove of cutting the little broken sticks off, I'm just going to do that before I show you how to do the other parts. It's the same. 
And the stems are kind of, like if you break it, I guess it's obvious. It doesn't like that. <laughs> so here's another piece that was eaten without any buds. It can go here. And I like to pull the thing that I'm going to cut so it comes up higher, makes it easier to see it, to know where it's coming from and where it's going. You know exactly where you're cutting. And you aren't cutting off any buds that will produce more flowers. Okay, so I cut off most of the broken stems, um, and now I'm just going to start cutting the pin cushions just because they're kind of easier to see than the ones that are partially spent. I also might just, <laughs> I also might cut off the ones that are partially spent, um, like this one as I go, but I don't like to really do that because each one of these little flowers does have nectar in it so the pollinators still enjoy them but then it gives me more work later to deal with so we'll go flower by flower and make the decision that way there's a pin cushion and you follow the stem all the way down and that's where you want to cut it right where it meets the plant leaving new buds to form flowers right in there here we have a flower that's in full bloom that is on the same stem as a pin cushion and then two little buds right here so I want those buds to flourish I'm just going to remove the pin cushion so follow the stem you can see how they get like twisted and cut there removing the pin cushion sparing the bloom and the new buds. Another pin cushion that's coming from that same stem but a little further down so just following the stem down here being careful not to cut what I was just sparing and even down there where I cut it from it looks like there might be a bud right there. Because this area is kind of a jumble I didn't miss some of the ones that are sticks like this but it doesn't matter if you miss it and you see it later, go ahead and trim it when you see it. Here's another stick. Here's one that has a little tiny bud. I'm going to cut it above the bud. Some of them are easy to cut off with your nails, but other times it doesn't work that easily. This one looks like it's been eaten, but no new buds coming from it, so I'll cut here. Okay, so here's a pin cushion. It's spent. If I follow the stem all the way down, it joins another stem where there are, there's a bud here, a bud here, and another bud here. So right here is a good spot to cut. And that leaves one, two, three buds to flower. Here's another stem. There's a pin cushion, a bud that's about to pop open, partially spent bloom so I could leave this partially spent bloom or just cut it now like that. Here's a spent bloom following it down to here and if I cut there it leaves a bud and another bud. Here's one that's slightly spent. You can even remove those down there is the pin cushion. 
and I'm going to leave the rest. Here's one that is partially, mostly spent, just has two little flowers. I'm going to cut it off down to here, because right there looks like there might be a new bud coming. This one looks like it was eaten. Here's a little pin cushion. I'm pulling it to see where it goes. Here it is. Little pin cushion. I cut it there, bud there, full bloom there. It's a very fat stem. And you keep repeating that until eventually it's all tidier. I love pincushion flowers because they're very whimsical. And they're like a perfect purple color kind of a lavender color. This is interesting. There's like two stems fused together. Chimera. Sometimes you'll run into some buds that dried and those won't flower but you know you can either cut them off now or leave them either way. Uh, if you cut them now you can easily pinch them off and voila! This is the type of blossom that I don't like to cut because those are pretty robust little flowers. I imagine a bumblebee finding joy in that. While you're doing this and you notice any leaves that are yellowing, you can just easily pull them off. This way you lower the chances of disease and like molding and things like that. This is like slippery already. You may also find stems like this that just die off and you can just completely cut that off just found this little bud. It looks like, I think it broke off and then got, because of all the rain, it got, I don't know, what would you call it? Moldy or soggy. <laughs> I'm also noticing that some leaves have little, what looks like bug bites all over them, so I'm going to spray this with neem oil. There you have a nice little Spindly pin cushion. Okay, 